So we just received our worms from Uncle Jim's Worm Farm actually last night, but we didn't have time to do it to make our worm bin yesterday, so today we're going to make it. Here it is. The postal carrier was all concerned that these 2,000 worms had got pretty crushed because the box was totally like crushed and everything. <laughs> we, we took a look and um, they seem to be okay. They were wiggling around yesterday. Now they don't like to be in bright sun, so we're going to find a little place to keep them shady while we show you what we're going to do to make a little worm bin for them. It's going to be very low tech, very low tech. We originally, I bought this thing, this bin, I just feel like it's just a bit too small for 2,000 worms. So I'm actually going to temporarily put my worms in here for a sec. They always need to have air, so they've got plenty of air coming their way. Now, um, I have this, um, I think it's a 25 gallon tote, and I'm going to put some drainage holes in it, like so. We need drainage holes so that things don't get too wet in the bin. I'm kind of taking my chances that they might make an escape through the holes, but they're going to be getting so much food I'm hoping they stay on board. I think some people use a mesh or something to try to keep them inside, but like I said, this is low tech. Okay, that ought to do the trick. Now, um, they're also going to need to breathe. So up here on the lid, make some holes. We don't want to um, have too many. Another thing I could do, I suppose, is make some sort of near the top. That's another option. And they'll kind of do both. One thing that worms don't like is too much light. They don't like light at all. So we're just going to put a few holes in here for air. They're going to be happy. There we go. There we go. Okay. So this bin is good to go. I'm going to kind of... The plastic's not good for them, so I took that out. So I've got kind of a holy bin here. Great. Um, now we need to prepare some bedding for them. I have two items that I'm going to use for bedding. There's a lot of options in terms of what you use, but today what I'm going to use is peat moss and shredded newspaper. Regarding the shredded newspaper, initially I looked at my office shredder, my home office shredder, and considered using this shredded office paper. However, there's a lot of colored everything, colored inks and colored paper there. So I decided instead I'm going to empty that and instead shred some black and white newspaper. So we'll recycle that. I just take black and white paper, somehow see what happens. that over here please sir great here we are so this is peat moss from um, our local um, gardening garden store I had to ask around to make sure that the peat moss did not have any chemicals the first bag that I chose said with fertilizer in small print and when I read the ingredients it said 99 to 100 percent peat moss well that's not really true because it actually had the other one had chemicals in it so they directed me to this one, which is way more than I'm going to need, but this is the smallest package they had. All of the peat moss there, for some reason, was from Canada. But here we go. Open this baby up, and then I'm going to do some mixing, I guess. Oh, thank you, and here's our off-screen helper providing us with a wonderful um, wooden spoon to kind of scoop some in. We're probably going to want, to want a couple of inches of bedding. So, we've got our peat moss here, and we're going to put in some shredded paper, shredded newspaper, there we go. And we're going to get some water and mix it. So I have some filtered water here, 
Ideally, you know, chlorinated water is great, but if you don't have it handy, then filtered water takes the chlorine out. Okay, so we've got our shredded newspaper and our very pure peat moss that doesn't have any chemicals in it. And we're going to add a bit of water. You've got to just and mix it like a big soup here. Mm. The thing is, it's never, it's never going to be like soup, really, because you don't want it to get too wet. You want it to have the consistency, when you're done, of a wrung out sponge. So what we've got here, this is the consistency of a wrung out sponge. It came out consistent and really nice and ready for our worms. So the technique here, we've got our worms right, right over here. They came in USPS, United States Postal Service Priority Mail. And they were shipped on Monday, they arrived on Wednesday, and here it is Thursday, and in they go. Ideally, we should have put them in on Wednesday, but I think they survived the night. However, the cat tried to get them. We had to put them away so the cat wouldn't. We can't see a whole lot of, ac a whole lot of activity. They're, they're um, shipped in dry peat moss. But when we dump them out, ready? Okay, here we go, you got it? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put them into the center. See that? I'm just going to put them in the center. Come on in. And I'm not going to really mess with them too much. Just let them wiggle because that's what they're good at. They are going to find their way around in their new home. They really don't need a lot of help from us. So they're wiggling and there is actually 2,000 worms here and they are busy. They're going to adapt to their new environment. They're going to enjoy their freedom. Um, one thing you'll notice about these guys is they are kind of skinny. They haven't eaten or had um, much water for three or four days. So in the next two days, they're going to get a little bit plumper and healthier looking. Right now, they're fine. What I've got here is compost we save from the kitchen when we cook. We save our kitchen scraps of vegetables and fruit peelings and oh, apple cores and things like that. We do not put dairy products in here. We don't put oils in here or meat. There's no meat in here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a spot in a corner and that's going to be where I'm going to feed them. Okay, in fact, it's a good idea to maybe dig yourself a little hole and take some scraps. I'm going to take something that's pretty easy to break down. I see there's some spaghetti here and that nobody, somebody didn't eat. That it doesn't have meat on it like I was saying. And we've got a little bit of cooked rice. We've got a piece of, mm, look at that. That's going to take a while to break down. So I'll, I'll do that later on. Make it easy for them on their first day. Grapes. Mm. It's like lunch. Mm, I love strawberries. There. Little, straw, little tops of strawberries. Some tomato. Grapes. Mm, just peas. There we go. That ought to do the trick. So what I'm going to do, just to cut back on flies and problems, I'm just going to kind of cover it up. And that way you don't have as many invaders coming. Now, do I need to introduce them to the food? No. They're going to find their way over there. Let them naturally find that. So we're, we're good to go. I just um, want to put my little protected little area. It's fenced in. And um, I'm going to put it under the tree. It's uh, not far from the door. And so it'll be easy to put our kitchen scraps in here every day or so. And um, one option is, if I wanted, I could put it up on a couple of bricks just to maybe help with drainage and so forth. I don't have to. Another thing I can do is just put it right there. And there's my very simple vermicomposting system.